So what is going on YouTube? My name is Mehul and welcome back to another video in which I'll be continuing with the Google Auth login. So, so far we have, uh, we have been able to get <clears throat> the native display with login with Google button click, but this won't work. Now, the reason for that is we just created the single Auth2 client ID and there was a little bit of mistake as well in the client ID in the last video. So what you want to do, and I'm just going to delete this one really quick, first of all and so what you want to do really is you want to create another credential right and make sure this is auth client id but this time this should be web application now go ahead and give this a name of whatever you like fast thumbs web for example and inside your authorized javascript origins add localhost 8100 which is basically the server at which ionic is running so your web view is basically running on localhost 8100 at the moment once you do that, just go ahead and hit create. So you're going to get another client ID. Just copy this one and we're going to make use of this client ID throughout the um, application, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search Google user here and I'm going to replace all the client IDs with this one because we did uh, copy pasted the wrong client ID in the last video. And even in the strings.xml file, you need the web view client ID. Right, so there we go, finally. Next thing, you have to be extremely, extremely careful about the package name, right? So you have com.fastthumbs everywhere, but what really matters is what is in your Android manifest file. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna change my package name from whatever it was, that is the io.ionic one, to com.fastum. So you would probably see something like io.ionic.starter here, right? So you want to change it to com.fastums. So once you have, uh, you know, changed the uh, name inside the package uh, Android manifest, just go ahead and search it for all the places. For starting off, you're going to get um, this as, as the name at, at these many places. So just go ahead and change it everywhere right inside even inside your main activity.java file com.fastthumbs com.fastthumbs everywhere and once you do that we need to change the file structure a bit as well so what i'm going to do i'm going to pick up this java folder right here and i'm going to move this main activity.java a couple of directories back and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a folder hierarchy which says com code tam I'm going to move main activity into com code dam and actually I think we are still inside the IO directory so I'm going to move this whole folder a couple of uh, just just a single directory back and I'm going to remove the IO folder so we should basically have this directory structure java com code dam uh, not really code dam actually it should be fast thumbs right uh, com code dam let's just move it to code dam to fast thumbs right all right so once we have that this sh this is how it should look like and now if you go ahead and search io dot ionic uh you shouldn't really get any um occurrence of that fast thumbs Right, so if you do get any occurrence of that, just go ahead and replace that and make sure you replace that hierarchy structure of folders as well. So once that is done, um, what you want to do is go back to Android Studio and make sure to clean the project inside build and clean the project, right? Then go ahead and close your application and run it one more time. So now, just make sure just go back to your fast thumb application and just make sure that this matches your package name as well com.fastthumbs save there we go all right so now if i go ahead inside my chrome inspector all right so we have a little bit of problem first of all ionic.starter this activity does not exist well if you still get a lot of errors just just do one thing uh just remove your android folder then run npx cap add android after you know after changing your package name 
then npx cap sync and one last thing just go ahead and follow along with the same thing which we did so i'm gonna go ahead inside my main activity right here and i'm gonna add this plugin again right and i'm gonna also add the coder code tricks line back into our application right here so that it works just fine and then finally we should already have this inside our capacitor config json files so that should not be a problem right so once we have done that what we need to do is just go ahead go back and rerun our application one more time and we have a, just a little bit of problem here inside main activity .java. you don't really want this whole bunch of lines just that would do and go ahead and build your application one more time and once you have done that you would see okay i think we have to allow this as well you're gonna see that you get the result just fine so as to summarize this video just make sure after changing your package just make sure of these these many points i'll just put them in the comments as well make sure your package name is same and synchronized up to file system as well right if you delete if you delete android folder you know just just make sure take backup uh backup of your key store your build.cradle file configuration which we did in the last video strings.xml xml right and finally don't forget to npx cap sync by you know just by replacing the web the web id use the client id of the web app right so there's that i'm gonna do it one more time so that you know not really do one more time just just, just uh mention these comments in the comments itself um so that you do not really forget or get caught into any sort of errors so yeah that's basically it for this video if you liked it don't forget to like and subscribe thank you for watching and i'll see you then in the next one